The process of growing up and chasing one's dreams is an endeavor fraught with uncertainty. The individual must fight with their own ignorance, constantly fuel the will to remain motivated, and contend with all the uncontrollable elements of the world around them. It's a lucky moment when one crosses paths with another who is trying to attain a similar goal. The relationships formed here offer support and a sense of community. All involved relate to and understand the struggles involved. I make my living as a game developer. My day-to-day -day is filled with countless little decisions and concessions that slowly build a piece of interactive software from little more than the imagination. My career started in the mid-2000s when I attended college in Ohio. While there, I met Andy Fenton and Derek Bradley, the founders of Multithreaded Games. They were a couple years ahead of me in our major, but were welcoming to all the underclassmen. While at school, they provided a preview of what was to come in my education, and would advise the younger students, sharing in their struggle. After graduating, I ended up working with them at my first job. I would be testing and experimenting with firmware that Derek had authored, or see Andy working on some completely different project the company was pursuing. Like many connections made in school, our paths would eventually diverge. I moved to the West Coast. I started chasing a career working for established game developers. Derek and Andy went a different way, though. After a couple more years at our once mutual employer, they took a leap of faith. They started their own game development studio. For the past two years, they've worked tirelessly to turn their dream into a playable reality. With the launch of their Kickstarter, we finally have a chance to play their game, Bevanchale, Altar of Roots, for ourselves. I love strategy games. Well, the idea of strategy games. I've always been bad at strategy and tactical games from RPGs to war games. Truth be told, I've always been afraid and intimidated by them. Strategy games were the domain of my older brothers. They played the sophisticated games with imaginative narratives and methodical gameplay. I played the fast-paced platformers that had me do two things, jump and go fast. The games where you plan and execute with precision fascinates me and has become a sort of unicorn to chase. I idolize these kinds of games. These games of legend, ogre battle, Final Fantasy tactics, civilization. So now we come to 2018. My brother posts on social media how some buddies of his have started a Kickstarter to fund a strategy RPG they're making. My curiosity was piqued. Now hang on, you say. Aren't Kickstarters kind of risky? You speak truths, I declare. Many Kickstarters show misleading content, don't provide demos, or just plain fail. But I go to the campaign page anyhow. And what do I see? In-engine gameplay. A clear direction for the project. A demo! For the first time in a long time, I saw a well put together, focused, and confident Kickstarter campaign. Best yet, the game looks awesome. Magic, stories, bright colorful worlds, and dragons. This was my first initial impression of Bevanjule, Altar of Roots. A game that looks to be a great strategy RPG. A game of legend. Bevanchale is a game currently in development. As such, it represents only a part of what the game intends to be. With what's here, the player is given a sprawling landscape to explore. Light blooms and accentuates a bright color palette. The rolling hills and far-off structural ruins draw the player's eye and their curiosity. These landmarks and structures hide within them beneficial items, new equipment, and dangerous monsters. The player is tasked with exploring these environments, to both progress the game's story and give them the tools to survive. Much of the landscape may be harvested for raw materials. Plant life, dead logs, and even the earth itself may be gathered either for completing quests or for an eventual crafting system. Like the landscape itself, these sources of materials keep the player looking around and paying attention to the environment. This combined with hidden items and the countless enemies populating the world give the player a sense of reason to learn the lay of the land. The world of Bevanchale is also populated by various NPCs. Some act as quest givers, offering the player a colored view of the lore of the world and tasks to keep the player's party progressing in the game. Other NPCs show fear and aversion to the player's party, suggesting a more sinister aspect to the player's characters. Yet others have clearly been involved in prior adventures with the party. They allude to moments of deception and cowardice during these adventures. The stories told in Bevanchale build a world of knaves, bullies, and scoundrels, being pitted against supernatural forces of destruction. Not all of Bavanchale's inhabitants are friendly, however. While exploring the world, various hostile creatures mill about. 
Creatures include beetles that focus on damaging multiple members of the player's party, plant-like stalks that focus on area control, mushrooms that support other members of the enemy party, and a wide assortment of others. If the player gets within range, these creatures will be aggroed and charge at the player. When the player comes in contact with an enemy, combat begins. What you do from there is a little up for debate. It's a surprisingly complicated situation when trying to develop strategies in Bevangelay's radial combat system. While the game puts value in controlling turn order in a battle, controlling that turn order is a bit tricky. Two main obstacles exist that conflict with turn control. Number one, there are no skills in the demo that directly change or delay turn order for any character beyond the cost of a skill. Number two, characters cannot block or limit the movement of another character without affecting their speed stat with a spell or item, neither of which my characters have in the demo. The end result of these obstacles is that I ended up shuffling my character's turn order by using their skills, sometimes needlessly, to adjust their ordering and wait for enemies to approach me to have them end their turn in close proximity to my characters. One strategy I adopted involved abusing the rogue's fade or stealth ability. I would bait enemies to target my rogue and then go into stealth before those enemies' action would resolve, thus canceling their attacks. It's details like these that start evolving into more complex strategies. This evolved into me adopting what I called a bullying strategy. Let me explain. Say I have set up a couple of my characters with actions, but those actions will not resolve until the enemy unit has resolved its action. Since the enemy unit is already in combat range, it will probably hit one of my units and then move away, thus leaving my character's combat range and making me miss with my attacks. The solution? Forcibly push the enemy back into range with another character. The monk slash healer player character has skills that do just that, known as knockback. Thus, the strategy goes as follows. Number one, rogue and tank characters queue up their skills slash actions to resolve later. Number two, the enemy attacks me and moves out of range. Number three, the monk slash healer uses his knockback skill to push enemies back into range of the rogue and tank while starting the chain of attacks. Number four, the rogue and tank resolve their attacks while adding to the chain of damage. This is by far not the only way to approach combat, as I found out from Sam when he described his playthrough. So, my first strategy is meant to work in cases where Morok is out of order with the rest of the party when trying to chain together attacks. In these cases, I try to use his spin kick to push enemies out of position when they've already queued up a special attack. The enemy will approach one of your allies, select a special attack, and they'll be inserted into the turn order accordingly. I then use Morok, queue up the spin kick, and essentially disrupt what they're doing. It's a very simple strategy, but it can save some damage from landing on the rest of the party. The enemy is forced to queue up another attack and position themselves within melee range of their target. This can move the enemy farther down in the turn order and give my other party members an opportunity to react. My second strategy is meant to force positional changes on an opponent. This again is most useful when a party member is out of order with the rest of the party when trying to chain together special attacks. More often than not, enemy AI will move out of range of a special attack targeting them if their turn ordering allows. This can be manipulated to force an enemy to change their position. If an enemy is in a good place to either avoid damage or attack multiple party members, take your out of order party member, park them next to the enemy, and queue a special attack. The trick here is to queue an attack that would happen after the enemy's turn takes place. One of two things will happen. Either you'll force the enemy to move out of range and therefore into a less opportunistic position, or they choose not to move and actually take the damage from the attack. Either way, you win. Aside from the strategies I've outlined, I mostly felt like I was at the mercy of the enemy AI in the initial turn order when figuring out how to chain together attacks. When out of order, it didn't seem worth it to me to use a special attack just to adjust the turn order, as SP is a valuable commodity that I would rather use when I intend to deal extra damage or cause a status effect change. I would instead opt to just use my normal attack and grind away at my opponents. As Chris and I spent time with Bavantrole, our anticipation and hopes for the game grew. There are some real clear seeds of a fun game in the provided demo. For example, when in combat, there is a strong emphasis on manipulating turn order. Having initiative over your enemies is key to successfully chaining attacks together and countering enemy special attacks. We felt that our ability to influence turn order was limited in the demo. Having stronger control over this would add valuable depth to the existing battle system. Likewise, 
the number of chainable skills were limited. As the game develops, we look forward to seeing how the character's skill trees develop. At the start of the demo, the player is introduced to the three main characters that make up the party. Their banter and skepticism paints this flawed but engaging picture. As Bavanchale is completed, we look forward to seeing the story and context around the player's actions mature, giving greater weight to the player's quests and additional features like a completed crafting system would increase the importance of the player's decisions in the game. We can't wait to dive into this world of thieves and monsters. We both look forward to seeing Bavanchale once it's released and are grateful to Multithreaded Games for providing such a well put together Kickstarter campaign. If you are interested in Bavanchale, you can check out their campaign by clicking the link in the video's description.